have you ever had to deal with someone who is very challenging? And that person might be narcissistic or have a lot of narcissistic traits or a lot of dysfunction. We're going to talk today about how to handle, how to manage yourself when you absolutely must be around that type of person. Because in a perfect world, you are walking away from and able to isolate yourself from toxicity, but we're not in a perfect world and we have to protect ourselves and we have to be able to manage difficult people and difficult situations. And that's what we're going to do today through the lens of Zen Buddhism. My name is Michelle Pava. You're listening to the Muddy Path Podcast. This is where we discuss all things transpersonal psychology, self-help, and Zen Buddhist philosophy. I would love for you to follow the podcast, rate the podcast, and also visit me at mymuddypath.com. I have free resources over there for you. Now, in a perfect world, we are not going to be around dysfunctional people or people who are toxic and mean and rude, unkind, sarcastic and biting and we're just going to be around other compassionate, loving people. And while I would love for that to be true, it isn't always possible. Sometimes we do have to have challenging situations and interact with challenging individuals. So how do we do that? Well, if we look towards the three poisons in Zen Buddhism, we can get a good idea of how we can stay grounded and handling these types of people. And in that groundedness, we can have boundaries. So let's talk about what the three poisons are, and then we're going to have an example of how you might be managing someone using the three poisons as a foundation and a philosophy. So the first poison is delusion. Delusion is that irrational space where nothing really makes sense or they're just trying to make sense of something. And sometimes you might have this. So delusion is sometimes when we are way too much in wishful thinking or way too much in negative thinking. But there are people who walk around very grandiose or very covertly passive aggressive. And there's a lot of different types of ranges in delusion. It can be downright scary. So delusion is one of the poisons. Another poison is hatred. Hatred feels like it sounds. It's going to be a lot of unwholesome negativity. It's going to be bringing you down. It's going to make you feel overwhelmed and agitated. And usually nothing too positive comes from hatred that has no space. So meaning if the hatred is just coming from someone's issues, not from something they want to change and be a change maker and a thought leader and be an activist, but it's really just coming from a negative space and they're hurling or projecting it at you or others, then that is also one of the poisons to be aware of. The other poison is greed. Greed is that space where you just can't get enough. And someone who's in greed you know, there's never enough money, there's never enough power, there's never enough influence. They just can't get enough. So how does any of this relate to how you might handle someone who is very toxic or dysfunctional? So it's very important to understand that in delusion, delusion can stand on its own or delusion can be infused with hatred or delusion can be infused with greed. But greed, and actually it can also be infused with both, but greed cannot take up the same space as hatred. So if someone is in a space of greed, they are not in hatred. And if they're in hatred, they're not in greed. However, they can have bouts of greed and then swing the other way to bouts of hatred. Now, this is what I want you to think about in managing toxic people. Toxic people, dysfunctional individuals, people that are suffering with narcissism or other dysfunction are all going to have some level of delusion. And that delusion might be low self-esteem or it might be very malicious. 
It might be grandiose. It might be covert passive aggressiveness, but they will all have a level of delusion. And usually that delusion doesn't go away until they've been through some kind of healing or recovery. They also will swing back and forth between greed and hatred. So just think about maybe you have a coworker that has a lot of narcissistic tendencies. So they're already coming in with some kind of delusion. And that delusion might be that they are low self-esteem and they need to prove themselves constantly. Or that delusion might be that they think they're better than everyone. We don't know what it is and it's not for us to figure out. But they're coming into the workplace, interacting with you, starting off with delusion. And that delusion really isn't going away. It's their baseline. And then they might go back and forth between greed and hatred. So the greed might look like they're being really nice to you. And maybe the motivation is they want you to do some of their work or no one else is talking to them or they're trying to get information from you. In some way, it looks to you like they're being kind. But then it swings in the other direction where now they're giving you the cold shoulder or they're not inviting you. They've invited a group of people out, but you're left behind. Uh, You might be the butt of their gossiping and rumors. So it goes back and forth. But what a lot of people do in dealing with these types of people is they will say, well, you know, that person isn't really nice, uh, but now they're being nice to me. So maybe they've learned, you know, we talked about it a little bit and, and now I think they might be turning a new leaf. Only to find out then when you think that person has turned a new leaf that really what has happened is they were just being in greed mode and they were getting on your good side again. Basically like Charlie Brown and Lucy, holding the football and pulling it away just to see the person fall. And that is a lot of times what a toxic person will do to you. So if you're If you're aware of the three poisons and you can see that someone maybe is navigating in delusion and that delusion might be very minor, like I said before, very, it could be very minor, but it could be that this person's navigating as a baseline of delusion and they're swinging back and forth between this greed and this hatred. And if you're aware of it, you're not going to be taken in by the level of greed that you normally would have because you're just seeing the greed as, oh, the person's being nice to me. But now if you're armed with the awareness that this niceness that they're doing, this kindness, this syrupy sweetness is really just all about their greed and all the whole unwholesome behaviors that go underneath of it, then you're able to keep a boundary. So I'm not saying to be rude to anyone that you might think is dysfunctional or having a hard time, okay? But what I am saying is protect yourself. Be compassionate to yourself as well as others. And by being compassionate and holding boundaries, it's going to teach them how to treat you. Now, sometimes their delusion is so heavy that that's not going to matter. They don't care about boundaries. But sometimes this type of boundary that you hold will help someone else to navigate their world a little bit better. They might start to emulate you and mirror you just because that's what they do. They have no sense of self and they'll start mirroring you. But sometimes that mirroring turns into mentoring. And so if they mirror you long enough, it's possible that they might learn a different way to behave, not only to others, but they might also begin to believe in themselves a little bit more and be more compassionate to themselves as well. So again, I'm not talking about someone who's so toxic that they're malicious and painful and hurtful. Yes, you need to get away from those types. Hopefully this has helped you to better understand the three poisons and how to navigate some difficult people that you absolutely must interact with. As always, again, if you are in danger or if someone is that toxic, no matter what the situation, you need to remove yourself from that situation. So hopefully this has helped you. If you want to hop over to my website, mybuddypath.com. And while you're there, fill out the contact form and let me know if you have any questions about this topic or if you have anything to add about it. And while you're there, I have a free course called Happy Again. I also have a free checklist, the Trauma Trigger Checklist, 
hard to say, that will help you to understand some triggers that you may or may not realize you have and how to manage them. And also I have a weekly email that I send out with journaling prompts or just reflective prompts that you can self-inquiry and work on enrichment. So again, I'm Michelle Pava and you have been listening to the Muddy Path podcast and I would love for you to subscribe, rate the podcast and just stay connected. Thank you so much for sharing this time. And on that note, let's take a big inhale. Exhale, roll the shoulders back, and let's just release those three poisons.